Chapter 21, Impulse Control Disorders. Someone with oppositional defiant disorder, they are angry and irritable all of the time. They are defiant, very vindictive. They have social difficulties. These individuals have conflict with authority figures, police officers, teachers, anybody that they deem is authority. They have academic problems galore. Conduct disorder, they are aggressive and destructive. They have no remorse. They don't care about others' rights. They could care less about rules. These children are often suspended for, from school. They're dropouts. That doesn't mean that they decide to get their GED. That just means they are complete dropouts. They are drug users. Oftentimes, they get arrested and wind up in a juvenile court. Intermittent explosive disorder, these individuals cannot control their aggressive impulses. A lot of times, they do not kung fu fight. They just verbally are very aggressive. These individuals punch walls. They normally do not punch people. They have problems with relationships. They're unable to have jobs. They stay in the legal department because what would you do? You get in the traffic, somebody ticks you off, you jump out, you start cussing folks out. And you know, a lot of times when you stay elevated, um, you notice that blood pressure stays up. Also, ironically enough, stress has a, a direct effect on blood sugar. So a lot of these individuals wind up with diabetes as well. All right. Two additional impulse control disorders, pyromania. These people enjoy setting fires. They set fires to anything and everything. No rhyme, no reason. They're not mad at folks. They just set a lot of fires. Kleptomania is when an individual steals for the sake of stealing. There's no reason. They don't need the product. It's not like they're starving and they need something from the grocery store. They are just stealing because they can. Now, table 21-1, this is a table. It's going to give the clinical features of each of these disorders for you to look at. I put them right here on the slide. That way you didn't have to worry about going into the book. But there's oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, uh, intermittent disorder. I would know the differences between this, these disorders. I would be able to pick out these disorders based on maybe a clinical feature I would also know maybe the age of onset, those types of things. All right, application of the nursing process. Now, of course, you're going to assess everybody and anybody for suicide risk. The assessment tools you use, those things are like uh, the depression scales that we've used in the past, like the... Um, Mental status exams, those, kind, those are the kinds of assessment tools that we use, not necessarily for these disorders, but that's just an example of the kind of tools or what I'm talking about by assessment tools. Also, we talk about assessing ourselves because these individuals, they're going to be very hard to deal with because most of the time they're very aggressive. So you're going to have to keep yourself in check. Somebody's coming at you all angry and upset. 
more than likely there's either going to be retaliation on your part or just a little bit of verbiage going on and then it turns into something that it doesn't have to be. All right, here's some ways uh, to assess ourselves. Here's some negative attitude, belief that the patient with these disorders is choosing not to get better, um, a belief that concerns for safety may be exaggerated. We have to provide equal care to everyone. We have to show empathy, not sympathy, empathy. And we have to look at the patient's environment, where they came from, why they might be responding the way they responded. These are some things that we have to look for. Risk of suicide, risk of violence, of course. Impaired impulse control, and then there's that aggressiveness. All right, nursing care for all impulse disorders. We've got that behavioral therapy. We're re redirecting behavior using healthy distractions. Remember, we talked about this in um, the other module where a lot of times redirection looks like rewards. And I know that goes against everything in someone's mind about what to do with an aggressive, disruptive behavior. A person with a direct uh, aggressive, disruptive behavioral disorder. But if you take them out of the therapy situation and get them involved in things that they enjoy or positive distractions, then they're less likely to be aggressive. So the redirecting behaviors, they are going to look like their rewards. They're going to. There's that behavioral contract again. We make contracts with these individuals. I said earlier about how Miss Jackson got speeding tickets all the time, which isn't necessarily true, and 15 speeding tickets. So what did a nurse do for me? They contracted with me. They made me promise that I was gonna drive the speed limit so there'd be no more speeding tickets. And then with these individuals, we're going to give them various medications to control some of the reasons that they could possibly be upset. Please note, avoid benzos, avoid, 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 because a lot of times benzos will have the opposite effect. And if you've already got an impulse control issue and you are given a benzo most of the time, you'll get real loose and it will disrupt or further disrupt your inhibitions and it'll be 10 times worse than it was in the beginning. All right, here, box 21-1, techniques for managing disruptive behaviors. There's that behavioral contract right there, very, very first. We've got down here redirection. Those two. Remember, a behavioral contract would be just like if I got a bunch of speeding tickets, so I would make a contract that I would not pass anymore. And down here, um, I'm getting redirected. I'm acting ugly, so you are basically going to pull me out of the setting so I can do something that can re-engage me into a positive experience. And remember that I said that a lot of times these behaviors turn into allowing the um, patient or whatever to get a redirection that looks like a reward, but it isn't. All right, here's some more um, positive feedback, clarification. These are not as important to me 
as the issue that we talked about for redirection. Um, I do want you to note down here with the physical restraint. Physical restraints are the last resort. You need to review that criterion rules on restraints, including in all the modules. We discussed in, in a module on this exam that we needed to keep in mind that a restraint is never written as a PRN uh, order. Never, ever, ever is it written as a PRN order. And that the nurse is responsible ultimately for the patient's care and safety. 